What are you doing? I'm looking for rainbows. You're looking for rainbows? Yeah, with my special rainbow glasses. My mom said that they had something called a prism, and so I'm looking for rainbows. I, I don't see any. Do I, you see any? I don't see any rainbows, no. Hmm. But prisms do sometimes help us find rainbows. Ooh. You know, why don't we work on the Rainbow Promise Award? And we could do that, and we can talk a little bit about how prisms help you find rainbows. Oh, I would love that! Okay. Well, the first thing I think that we should probably figure out is, do you know what colors make up the rainbow? Oh, yes. You know what? I have a really cool song that helps me remember. Oh, you do? Yes. Um... <coughs> great song. Thanks, I made it up last year. You did? Yeah. Oh, during iGlow? Yeah! Oh my goodness. Well, we were learning about the colors. Wow, that's great. Yeah. You are right though. Red, orange, yellow, green, blue, indigo, and violet are the colors of the rainbow. Ooh, yay. So this is kind of a funny thing. You know you learned about the primary colors in school? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. So do you remember what the primary colors are? Um, red and um, blue and yellow. You're right. Yes. The primary colors are red, yellow, and blue. But you know what? When we talk about light, there's kind of some different primary colors. That's kind of weird. Eh? But it, yeah. So in light, we talk about green, red, and blue instead of red, blue, and yellow. So instead of yellow, it's green. Weird, That's huh? That's weird. Yeah. And also, when you mix red and green with light, you get yellow. Which Wait, is, what? Yeah, it's totally weird. But You're blowing my mind here. <laughs> I know, right? So what happens when you mix all the colors together when you're coloring a picture? You get like an ugly shade of brown or black and blah. Yeah. yeah. Do you know what happens when you mix all the colors of light together? I'm guessing it's not the same thing. You're right. It becomes white. What? Yeah. So if you mix red, green, blue light together, you get white light. That's crazy. Yeah. So do you know what color you would get? We'll guess if you mixed red and blue light together. Purple! You don't get purple, you get- No way! You get magenta. You get a kind of pink color. That's crazy! Yeah, and how about, so we talked about red and green. What do you think you get if you mix green and blue together? Green and blue, um, I don't know. You get cyan. So you get like a teal. Oh, t oh, I wasn't sure what cyan was, but now I know. Yeah, kind of like a bluey green color. You okay, well, that makes color. sense. Yeah. Blue and green makes blue green. Okay, right. got it. Right, got sure. it. Sure. So when we talk about the rainbow, we have to remember. I like rainbows. <laughs> I know you do. Yeah. yeah, we have to remember that light works a little differently than our crayons do. Good news. Well, I'm glad you told me that. I would not have known that. Yeah. So when we look for rainbows, there's a couple of things that we really need to be sure of. Okay? So the first is that the position of the sun and the raindrops, they have to be in just the right spot. So the sun has to be behind you. It has to be behind the person looking for a rainbow. Okay, behind. Yep. Back there. Yep. You got it. Okay. And it needs to be kind of low in the sky. Okay. All right. 
So ideally, it needs to be less than 42 degrees uh, above the horizon. Wow. So uh, do you know how much a 45 degree angle is? Um, this is a half of a 90 degree angle. Yep, this is a 90. This is a 45. So it needs to be maybe like this. Ooh. All right? So here's the horizon. So the sun's got to be pretty low. Ooh. Okay. Really? Yeah. And the, the lower the sun is in the sky, the more of a rainbow arc you're going to see. Oh, that's cool. And then obviously the other thing that you have to have for a rainbow is... Um, bows. No, rain. Rain. That, if you have to have that makes sense. So you, I, and it could be rain, or it could be fog, or any other source of water droplets. Then those have to be in front of you. So sun behind. Yep. And rain in front. Right. You've got it. And sun low in the sky. And sun low in the sky. Oh, that's cool. You got it. So the two big things we need to make a rainbow are sun and rain. Rain. Yes. Yep, you got it. But you can make a rainbow without those things, sort of. So one of the ways to do that is this thing I have here. Do you see this? Kind of. My glasses are a little weird, but yes. So this is the same thing that's in your glasses. This is a prism. And oh. if you look really carefully, you'll see that when you look through it, you don't see what's directly ahead of you. So I don't see what's directly ahead of me anyways because these glasses are kind of weird <laughs> on my eyes. So when we're looking in this prism, over here you can see my hair, and over here you, you can't, but we can. Over here we can see, see your glasses. Finger. Yeah. It's weird. That so is weird. Light, when it enters a prism, it actually changes. The, the light comes in and it changes the direction that the light is going. The prism does. Ooh. Yeah, that's pretty cool. Crazy. So if you have a really, really um, full spectrum light, if you have an honest to goodness white light source, then when light comes in, you'll, you will see a rainbow on the other side. Isn't that cool? Now, the other way that you could do it is you could get a mirror and a flashlight and put the mirror in some water, like in a pan, and shine the flashlight through the water on the mirror and then hold a piece of paper above it and you could see a rainbow that way too. Really? Yeah. And That's, I could make my own rainbow? Yeah. I, I don't even need the glasses? No. Yeah. Oh. But the glasses are pretty cool. They are kind of cool. So I think we might actually even try that a little bit later. Okay. Okay. That's one of the activities that we're going to do is we're going to try to make our Yay! Rainbow. But the reason that works, and this is kind of a little complicated, I think, but the reason that that works is because each color of the rainbow is a different wavelength of light. Oh. So... If you look at my picture here, waves, if you think of like ocean waves, waves are, yeah, waves are patterns of motions that transfer energy from one place to another without transferring any matter, without transferring stuff. They just move energy. So light is a wave because it takes energy from the sun and it brings it here to earth. But lucky for us, it doesn't bring matter with it doesn't bring extra, the sun the sun yeah it doesn't bring the sun with that is it. lucky yeah that would be that would be a little tricky so you might have heard have you ever heard of sound waves yes yeah so sound waves travel through air and they allow us to hear sound and water waves move on top of water and light waves move light through space oh that's neat okay so wavelength measures how fast the waves are going up and down, how fast the distance, or how close or far away the distance is between the, the peaks. Okay. So if you think of being at the ocean and you watch the waves come in, 
how far is one peak from the next peak, okay? And sure. the, the farther away those two peaks are, the longer the wavelength. And the shorter they are, the shorter the wavelength. Okay. Okay. I'm following you so far. So when you put light through a prism, mm -hmm. the wavelengths, each different color has a different wavelength. And so when it goes through a prism, that prism bends the wavelength at a different rate. And that's why we see different colors in a rainbow. Oh, so it like separates them because of the wavelength. Like one might get lost and take a left turn instead of a right turn. So it comes at a different time. Right. Kind, kind of, of like that. Like that. Yeah. Okay. You got it. Does sure. that make sense? Yeah. So that's how we get rainbows. And the same thing works in a raindrop. And that's why we need raindrops to see prism or to see rainbows too. Because when light hits a raindrop, it does the same thing. It goes into the raindrop and it reflects through the raindrop. The raindrop separates the different wavelengths and you can see a rainbow. Oh, wow. That's so cool. It's really, really fun, isn't it? Yes. So your glasses have some prism in it and that theoretically ought to help you see a rainbow. But I think you might need it to be uh, a little bit brighter. You might need to be outside. That's probably true. Yeah, and I think that would help. So that's what I would suggest. Hey, Miss Becky. Hey, what, Katie? All this talk about wavelengths and waves makes me think of Noah's Ark and the flood, which is where the first rainbow was. You're right. That very first rainbow that is in the Bible, it's talked about in Genesis 9, and it's verses 8 through 17. Oh. Do you know what it says? Um, I'm guessing it talks about the flood and a rainbow. Yeah, it says, and God said to Noah and his sons with him, now I'm going to establish my covenant with you. Wait, wait, pause. Yeah, what's a covenant? That's a great question. So a covenant is an agreement, and it's usually a formal agreement uh, between two or more people uh, to do or to not do something that uh, is specified in the agreement. Oh. So covenants usually involve things like promises and conditions and blessings for keeping the covenant. And in the Bible, there's often a curse for breaking the covenant. Oh, so like when two people make a covenant and get married? Yeah, exactly. Oh. So in the Bible, Covenants are often an agreement between God and his people. And God in the covenant promises, uh, makes a promise to his people, and he requires them to act a certain way. Oh, okay. Okay? Yeah. So in the Old Testament, God made agreements with, there's three big ones that I can think of. So one is Noah, and that's what we're talking about. I was going to say that Noah. one. Yep, Noah. Okay. And then there are two other people that God makes a covenant with. Um, um, that they can make a covenant. Wait a minute. Louis! 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 Hey, do you know of someone in the Bible that God made a covenant with? Louis says God made a covenant with Abraham. He sure did. You're yeah. absolutely right. God promised that Abraham would become the father of a really great nation, the nation of Israel, provided that Abraham went to the place that God asked him to go. So oh. Abraham left his home as part of his covenant agreement with God. Oh, well, that's really neat. Yeah. The other person that God made a covenant with is Moses. Oh, yeah. So God said that the Israelites would reach the promised land, but that they had to obey the commandments that he gave them. They didn't always do a good job of that, did they? They didn't actually always do a very good job at all. And in fact, they spent some time wandering around in the desert. Sometime, you mean like 40 years? Like 40 years. And even after that, they still didn't get it right very much. Oh. So, 
in the New Testament, there's a covenant that God makes too. There is? Yeah. God makes with a, who? God makes a covenant with us. What? And God promises us salvation to all those people who believe in Jesus. Whoa, that's so cool. Isn't that great? Yeah. I think it's a really cool thing. Thank you for telling me about covenants. Yeah, you're welcome. So, okay. Can so, we go back to the story? Yeah, we can go back to okay. the story. So now God says, I'm going to establish a covenant, a promise. I know that is now. Yep. With you and your descendants and with every living creature that was with you. Whoa. So the birds and the livestock and the wild animals and everything that came out of the ark. Wow. And the covenant will be this. Never again will all life be destroyed by flood waters. And never again will there be a flood that destroys the earth. Ooh, well, I'm glad he made that covenant. Yeah, that's great, huh? Yep. And so God then continued and he said, this is the sign of the covenant that I'm going to make with you, a covenant for all generations to come. I have set my rainbow in the clouds and it will be a sign of the covenant between me and the earth. Whenever I bring clouds over the earth a, and the rainbow appears in the clouds, I will remember my covenant between me and you and all living creatures of every kind. Wow. Never again will the waters become a flood to destroy all life. Whenever the rainbow appears in the clouds, I will see it and I will remember this everlasting covenant between God and all living creatures of every kind on earth. Ooh, so a that's rainbow. That's really neat. Yeah, a rainbow is a big covenant, right? It is a big covenant. And one of the great things about God is that he always keeps his promises. He does always keep his promises. So can you tell me in your own words, what does the rainbow promise us? Um, that God will never flood the whole earth again. Yeah, you're absolutely right. God's never going to flood the whole earth again. So Genesis 17, 7 says this. It says, I will establish my covenant as an everlasting covenant between me and you and your descendants after you for all the generations to come to be your God and the God of your descendants after you. Whoa! That's a neat promise. It's a great promise that God wants to be our God, and he wants to be our God from now until the end of time. Whoa! I'm going to remember that every time I see a rainbow. I think that's a great, great plan. So the rainbow promises us that God is never going to flood the earth again. But did you know what? that there is going to be rainbows in heaven? Well, I mean, there's going to be water and light in heaven, right? So there should be rainbows? There should be rainbows. But there's a special place that there's going to be a rainbow. Oh, special rainbows? Yeah. So there's a couple of, of special places. So I'm going to read you a couple of verses, okay? Okay. Okay, so Ezekiel 1.28 says this. It describes the majesty of the Lord this way. The glow around him looked like a rainbow in the clouds on a rainy day. That's what the glory of the Lord looked like. What? He has rainbows all around him? That's what the Bible says. Oh, that's so pretty. And then in Revelation 4, verses 2 and 3, John describes the beauty surrounding the throne of God. And he says, at once the Holy Spirit gave me a vision. There in front of me was a throne in heaven with someone sitting on it. And the one who sat there shone like jasper and ruby. Around the throne was a rainbow shining like an emerald. The glory of the Lord is a splendid and beautiful sight. That sounds beautiful. So I think one of the important things to remember about rainbows is not just that God is not going to flood the earth again, which is a wonderful promise, but to remember that these rainbows 
in heaven are, are around God. And it's, it's a reminder that God's presence is with us here on earth, too. Whoa. That's really cool. Whenever I see the rainbow, I see all the pretty colors. And I think that he painted the sky just for me. And that he must love me a really, 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 really lot. I think you're absolutely right. The sign of the rainbow, the covenant of the rainbow, was meant to be for future generations. And when we see a rainbow, we can have it be a reminder of our covenant-keeping God and of his indescribable beauty. Yes. I think that's a really great way to end. I do too. So what I want to do now is we're going to say goodbye Okay. And then we're going to go work on making our own rainbow. I can't wait! All right. We'll see you later, guys. Okay. Bye! Bye.